We will now like to start a regular press conference by Foreign Minister Motegi. From my part, I would like to say uh, one point. The EU released a strategy concerning cooperation in the Indo-Pacific yesterday. Japan welcomes the fact that EU expressed strong in ex intention to engage in Indo-Pacific region. In January this year, I myself attended EU Foreign Affairs Council meeting as the first Japanese foreign minister and explained Japan's vision and initiatives regarding free and open Indo-Pacific. The document released this time around mentions democracy, rule of law, rule-based international order, and freedom of navigation, which Japan considers important. And also it covers cooperation in a wide-ranging area, including security, defense, economy, and regional connectivity. Japan continues to cooperate with the EU in order to EU and uh, European countries and other relevant countries in order to realize Indo-Pacific uh, free and open Indo-Pacific. Please raise your hand if you have a question. Please come to the standing uh, microphone and please identify yourself, your affiliation. Sato-san, Asahi newspaper, Sato. The former vice president and also former ambassador of the US to Japan uh, under the Clinton administration, uh, Mr. Walter Mondale has passed away. In 1996, as the uh, ambassador, he came to agreement with then Prime Minister Hashimoto for the return of Futema Air Station, and uh, he made a contribution to Okinawa. What is your view? Uh, yesterday, in 19th year's time, Walter Mondale, the former U.S. ambassador to Japan, passed away. We extend our sincere condolences. Now, the former ambassador, Mondale, under the Carter administration from 1977 to 1981, was the vice president of the United States. And furthermore, from 1993 through 1996, he served as U.S. ambassador to Japan. And uh, during his ambassadorship, uh, not only the issue that was just mentioned, there was the U.S.-Japan trade friction issue and also U.S.-Japan securities uh, issue, as well as the U.S.-Japan agreement for the return of Fudema base. And uh, had, he had already dealt with various uh, issues related to U.S. military in Japan, and he contributed greatly uh, to the development of U.S.-Japan relations. And after he retired as ambassador, in Minnesota, where he is originally from, he was the honorary chair of the American uh, Japan Society, and he greatly he contributed uh, to the promotion of mutual understanding between the U.S. and Japan, as well as the development of human resources for the future of U.S.-Japan relations. And based on this achievement, in 2008, he was awarded the Grand Guardian of the Order of the Polonia Flowers, and uh, he laid the foundation for a strong uh, U.S.-Japan relationship and greatly uh, contributed to the uh, strengthening of this alliance. We once again pay our respects to his, to his uh, contribution. Next question, please. Tomita from Nikkei, earlier on you talked about the EU, uh, the, you welcome the uh, Indo-Pacific uh, strategy, but looking at the current situation, global situation, uh, in the uh, South uh, China Sea as well as East China Sea, there are some uh, attempts to change the st uh, status quo as well as the current in EU as well. So Japan, together with the EU and uh, your ally country, uh, US, how, how are you going to, to cooperate? As I said earlier, in January, EU Foreign Affairs Council meeting, I myself pointed out that uh, in the Indo-Pacific region, there is a great potential for growth, but at the same time, there are diverse challenges in this region. And in response to that, we had a, a extensive discussion, and the EU document, which was recently released, uh, also expresses uh, concerns about the uh, rising tension due to geopolitical competition in the region, and uh, the EU uh, clarified its intention to advance engagement 
in Indo-Pacific with partners that have announced their own approaches to this region. Of course, Japan is included as an important partner in this regard. For example, regarding Ukraine situation, we can't uh, talk about it uh, on the same level. However, unilateral attempt to change the status quo, I think we need to cooperate closely with the U.S., our ally, and other like-minded countries. It is extremely important to do so. For instance, uh, since the beginning of this year, I had a two plus two meetings with the U.K., U.S., Indonesia, and Germany. So we were able to share the awareness of the current situation in those meetings, and we came to agreement that we will advance cooperation. Free and open Indo-Pacific five years ago in 2016, this was uh, put forth by Japan as a vision. And the significance and importance of this vision is expected to grow in the future, and it is actually rising now. And countries which share this vision is increasing in number. So going forward, the partners who share that values, including the EU, we like to advance cooperation going forward. Thank you. TV Asahi Sato. I have the same question regarding the EU Indo-Pacific cooperation strategy. This time, EU put together this document. In this uh, exercise, people are saying that it would take several years to come up with a document, and you participate in January in the Foreign Affairs Council. It's been only three months. What do you think of this uh, urgency and the speed, and what is the background to this high speed? Oh, it means that uh, there are various developments throughout the world uh, which is accelerating. As I mentioned earlier on, there's Indo-Pacific. There is a possibility of huge development, and at the same time, there are various challenges. It is exposed to various challenges, and uh, within that, already in France, uh, Germany, Netherlands, they have their own vision that they have already announced. So as the EU is creating these strategies, I think uh, there was high opportunity to create this in January. So that is what I felt when I attended the Foreign Affairs Council meeting. So at a very early timing, this is the Foreign Affairs Council meeting, but ultimately it will be uh, decided at the EU Commission. So I think uh, they are very speedily dealing with this. That is my view. A related question. And the last part, showing communication would be uh, issued as a document by s September, it says. So what is your expectation for that? And in compiling this document, uh, Minister Motegi, have you had any discussions or will you have any discussions? As I touched upon earlier, EU as a whole uh, put together, is going to put together this document and that exercise will uh, progress in the future. I think that released uh, document this time is the basis for that exercise. For example, through G7 and in other fora and opportunities, European countries, uh, foreign ministers, or maybe European commissions, a commissioner in charge of diplomacy, I will have opportunities to talk with them in the future. So we are going to advance further coordination and cooperation, taking advantage of those meetings. Internet Ho Media, Hamamoto is my name. I have a question regarding Myanmar. Myanmar military is cracking down on civilian people. And the, uh, the government of Japan is saying that uh, it is going to use the uh, human network with the Myanmar military, not through sanctions, but dialogue. However, Yuki Kitazumi, who has been uh, detained in Myanmar, journalist, and in what way are you going to respond to the detention of this journalist going forward? Okay. Uh, sorry. Our policy is to try to resolve through dialogue. Who who's set forth that policy. I read that in the Nikkei newspaper article. So please ask the journalist at the Nikkei newspaper. Understood. Ask some please.
like to uh, follow up on your statement last week on Iran uh, announcement to resume uh, the instrument uh, in Treatment of uh, uranium. Uh, so uh, you expressed, Japan expressed uh, concern, and you, they said they will uh, activate their policy toward uh, uh, making the Middle East more stable. What are exact steps in this regard Japan is planning to take, and especially with the continued kind of cross-border uh, missiles uh, against Saudi Arabia and also. Uh, regarding the Iranian request to reduce the sanctions. Thank you. Regarding Iranian nuclear issues, there are two things which are moving forward. One is a positive move in Vienna among relevant countries. A positive dialogue is uh, progressing, which I welcome. And the uh, U.S. and Iran, going back to the implementation of the nuclear deal, I have expectation for that, so I am closely watching the progress of the dialogue. But at the same time, as you mentioned, Iran uh, started to uh, produce enriched uranium up to 60 percent. I have a strong concern about that. So I, uh, Japan strongly urges Iran to comply with the JCPOA to refrain from provocative measures that undermine the agreement and to act in a constructive manner, aiming to resolve the issue through the dialogue. I have met with the uh, Foreign Minister Zarif, and I convey this message directly. Japan is not a direct party to this JCPOA. However, Japan is a U.S. ally. We have a very good uh, traditional friendly relationship with Iran. We are going to leverage such relationship. On this occasion, I cannot uh, say clearly what kind of steps we are going to take, but we are going to make a, a positive contribution to the progress of the dialogue. Thank you. Thank you. Freelance journalist Shiba is my name. In Myanmar, Yuzumi Kita, Yuki Kitazumi is detained. So uh, you have been working behind the scene for this matter. However, in response to Myanmar's reaction, what Japan is going to do, I think that kind of action should be clarified. For example, you have to set a deadline for the suspension of uh, uh, violence in Myanmar, or if that deadline is not complied with, you should introduce sanctions or the unlawful detention of Japanese people. You should respond more positively. I think your reactions to be taken should be clarified. On the 18th evening in Saigon, the uh, Japanese journalist uh, in their 40s uh, was arrested at home and uh, currently is detained in insane jail in Yangon. So according to Myanmar authorities, there is no injury uh, to that person, but the fact that he is detained, that is, cannot be accepted. So we will protest against Myanmar and, for, uh, and we will demand uh, early meeting as well as early release uh, of this uh, Japanese national from all levels. And based on that, uh, currently what is important now? Now this Japanese national, we need to ensure his safety and also to realize early release. So to make that possible, what kind of actions would be most appropriate? That is the way we would like to view this issue. Thank you. Uh, with this, we would like to close today's conference. Thank you all very much.